what a day! What a lovely day! Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome back. Oh, I'm excited about this, all right. This is the PMP Knives Berserker in the gray variation. It's going to come in a gray. It's going to come in an all blacked out variation. And there is one that's uh, uh, titanium flame striped bronze titanium. This is the PJ, the plain Jane, but there is nothing plain about this design. When you see it, I think you're going to dig it. So the PMP Berserker is $270 to $300, depending on the variation that you choose. And as I am now starting to do, we're going to do the TLDW. Too long, didn't watch. For those of you that just can't sit through an entire video and you don't want to hear all the backstories and you don't want to really get a feel for the knife itself, you just want a quick summary, here you go. Impressive size, big, bold size. I'll get back to the packaging in the full review portion in a few minutes. But this bad boy, <laughs> yep, she's a big one. So it's a very, very intimidating size, but it's actually really slim for what it is. It reminds me a lot of the Alpha Smilodon, where it's big, but it's slim, making it pretty easy to carry. It is really well made. All the way around, this is a really nice quality knife. Uh, I do believe that it is a quality befitting a higher price point. If there were fancier finishes on there, I could definitely see a higher price point for sure. But this plain Jane version that they're just calling gray is $270. And uh, yeah, oh, look at that action. Woo! And that's the other thing, man. This action really is amazing. And it's not just the weight of the blade, it's the smoothness, the way this is built. We've also got a really nice crispy detent. It is a limited production knife. They generally don't make more than a hundred of any variation, and it's usually only three or four variations uh, of a model. So it's usually three to four hundred knives of a model, and then it is done. So if you don't grab it right away, you're going to miss out. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, it is extremely sharp. It's got a wonderful edge on it, and I like having that sharpening notch on there. It's a great value, in my opinion. It's 270 bucks to 300 bucks. Massive chunks of titanium, big, bad, bold, beautiful blade with some beautiful grinds and really nice milled fuller. I like it all the way around. Now, the only real negatives that I've got, that uh, weird spoon-shaped clip thing on there kind of feels like an afterthought. It doesn't really fit with this very angular design of this Americanized Tonto-style blade. Not a huge fan of the shape of it. It seems to work just fine. I don't really have any issues with it performance-wise. It's just the looks of it. I mean, especially when the knife is closed and all you have is handle to look at. Uh, that's, it's just not my favorite thing 
in the design flow. I really love all the the bevels and the chamfers that are done in this frame. They're beautiful and they they accentuate this entire this entire design and then you've got this weird I don't know what shape that's supposed to be. I do like that it's blind screwed though, no extra hardware. Uh, but yeah, I really think that they, they could have gone the extra mile and spent a little more time designing the clip. It could be a bit narrower in its height. Uh, it, it is tall in this direction. So when you've got it folded up, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty tall knife. One of the things that I, I admire about this is for being such a large knife, it's so slim, which makes it very easy to carry. It's a fairly deep carry pocket clip, so it kind of disappears in the pocket. But you've got a lot of bulk in this direction that takes up more room in your pocket. And if it was just a little, just a little tiny bit more slender, um, I think this would have opened itself up to a lot, a lot larger of an audience. But you know what? PMP is all about big, bad, bold, and beautiful, and that does fit the bill. It is big, bad, bold and beautiful and he had good luck finding one like i said there's probably no more than a hundred of each variation all the ones that i looked through all their dealers uh when this arrived they all seem to have been sold out uh so if you come across one i promise you for the money you're spending you're absolutely going to love it it's just going to be a bit of a struggle trying to find one okay that is it for the TLDW, let's get into the full review. Let's look at the packaging. So you've got this closed cell foam interior that's laser cut, really nicely done. Um, they're also lasering in their logo and the model names, which I think is a pretty classy move. This is a nice display. It's a nice presentation. When you first get that knife and you're greeted with this presentation, it looks clean, it looks professional, it looks pretty high-end. No, it's not a solid oak box with, you know, gold hinges and stuff, but you're also not spending $5,000 on this either. I think this is a really well-thought-out, well-put-together, simple solution, not only for a great presentation, but also to protect the knife in shipping. We'll take a look at the card here. dun dun, dun. PMP Berserker, first run. Oh, there were only 200 pieces made worldwide. I, I guess I probably could have read the card before <laughs> talking to you about that. So it is way more limited than I thought. So there's probably like 50, 75 of some or the other, and that's it. Steel M390, designer Carlo Maria Massa. I have no idea if I butchered that. So there you have it. Let's get the card out of there. Nothing else in there. Very classy. Totally dig that. Now let's get into the specs because that is going to be a very important part of this review. So what do we have? We have a titanium frame lock with an overall length of 8.92 inches. Blade length, get this, just under 4 inches. 3.91 inches in M390. The handle is 5.1 inches. You've got ceramic bearings. You've got a ceramic detent. You have all titanium hardware, a flat top titanium. Actually, is it a, is it a, yeah, it is flat. I didn't know if it was concaved or not. Uh, it is a flat top uh, titanium pivot. You have all titanium hardware, titanium backspacer, titanium pocket clip. And it weighs at 7.5 ounces. Now, for those unfamiliar I have had the wonderful opportunity to review a few PMP knives. And they all still sit here in my collection. I also have another one, which is the, the plain Jane version of this, which was the initial original prototype. They only had, they, I guess they had made two. One got lost in shipping. And then the one that remained is in my collection. And I'm having it customized right now. So this is the Alpha Beast. If you guys remember, this is... Four hundred thousandths of an inch thick. It is utterly, crazily insane and and just a shit ton of fun. And again, really, really well made. But, I mean, this is like carrying a cinder block. This is not really meant to be carried. You know, this is, this is your 
show off knife. This is your, hey, you think you got an overbuilt knife? Let me reach into my case and pull out what an overbuilt knife really is. So that shows the true excess of PMP knives. Then we have the Alpha Smilodon. This is another one of their prototypes. This was a, this is one of one, I believe also. I'm kind of blanking. Yeah, one of one. And I had the wonderful opportunity to uh, add this to my collection as well. And this was such a, a departure from what I had known with the Alpha Beast because look how slim that is. But in typical PMP knives fashion, it's still overdone. It is a monster. It's huge, yet it's really surprisingly easy to carry. The action, of course, is utterly fantastic. These guys are, are they're, they're making what, what feels almost like thousand dollar knives for, you know, 250 to 350, 400 dollars. It's nutty. Beautifully done. And that was uh, two extremes, right? You've got this big chonker here. Then you've got this big knife that's slimmer and easier to carry. And then you have this one that's right in between. It's big and it's bold, but it's not too thick. Oh, God, does that feel good. Look at the bold lines in that blade. The grinds are fantastic. I would absolutely kill, and I mean kill, for an all-satin version. If this was all hand-rubbed satin in the flats, don't really know what finish I would want in the, uh, in the fuller. Then belt satin swedge, belt satin primary, belt satin tip grind. What a showpiece that would be. Maybe it could be mirror polished inside of the, uh, the fuller there. But what a showpiece, because these grinds are, they're, they're, even with it all being stonewashed, the grinds just pop. They look really, really good. And I'm going to tell you right now, as somebody that does grind a lot of Tanto blades myself, I typically don't like to see this line. I want that to be continuous over to the tip. Unless you're doing a true compound grind where this is going to have those those striations of, of the belt marks going in, you know, in this direction as opposed to the vertical direction of the primary bevel. And then you're going to want that separation between the two, right? But when it's the same angle, this is the same angle as this one, I, I, I don't want that line. If anything, and I just... I, I just finished it today. One of my scaphoids were, instead of doing my continuous grind like I normally do, I decided, well, I'm just going to kind of sweep this grind back into this one a little bit. And it looked gorgeous. It has kind of the look of a compound grind without being a compound grind. Um, and that would be acceptable because that would really flow with it. But here's the thing. While I don't typically like that, they did it well because a lot of times you'll see it almost completely vertical. It'll be like right there or even leaning forward a little bit. And this one is leaning back just a little bit and it goes with the lines on the rest of the blade. So for me, I have no problem whatsoever. I think that looks really handsome. It really looks aggressive. It goes with that that overall look because this, this knife looks like it's in motion when it's sitting still. It just looks like it's fast. It's leaning in that direction. It's giving you that, that forward momentum, that forward uh, kind of look. I really like that. And here's the other thing, too. I wasn't sure if I was going to like this very organic-shaped frame with this very angular Americanized Tanto. I really wasn't sure when I saw the pictures. When it arrived, it, it, all that left my mind. Because this melts into your hand. Absolutely melts. 
Everything is comfortable. There are no hot spots anywhere. It's super, super comfortable in the hand. When it's closed, it's it's a bit bulky. Like I said, it's it's quite tall. But when you're holding this to use it, listen, not a lot of guys are going to buy a knife like this and actually hard use it. I hope somebody does because these knives are made for that, especially in this price point. It's a replaceable price point. Not a replaceable quantity, unfortunately. So, yeah, I could see a lot of people buying this and just babying it and keep it in their collection and being pocket jewelry. Nothing wrong with that. Everybody collects for a different reason, and it's nobody's place to tell you how you should be enjoying your knives. But if you were to use this, this locks into your hand, and it feels so, so nice. I wonder... No, there is no way to access that fuller to flick it. So it is a flipper only. I was kind of hoping you could. That's the other thing, too. If they had just cut away a little bit more of the frame, you could have accessed that and reverse finger flicked it. But man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. All right, so let's talk about the uh, the design. The, the, the jimping. Oh, that's good jimping. Little bit sharp. So, I mean, this, this could be a, a skin shredder. But it's, again, if you were using this and you actually were doing what a Tanto is designed to do, you are very unlikely to slip up your hand up into the blade because the flipper, nicely jimped as well, is going to be a good finger guard. And that jimping on the spine is very, very positive. The jimping on the flipper tab is also really nicely done. There we go. And they bring it around so it doesn't matter what kind of flipper you are. Whether you engage from up here or all the way up here, you have accessible jimping. Very, very nicely done. The gap in the lock bar cutout is not excessive. I've been seeing a lot of that lately where these things are just, there's like it's like a valley. There you can see the uh, the lock bar over travel, so it will not let you overextend the titanium lock bar. Lock bar access is wonderful. Why? Because they cut away on the presentation side, the show side, so that your thumb can drop right into that lock. I would have liked to have seen that softened a little bit, but they did mill a channel in there. Um, but yeah, that could be a little bit softer. If I really had to nitpick or gripe about something, yeah, it'd be that in the uh, in the clip. And that's really it. This knife is just about perfect. And they have milled out lots of lightning pockets on the inside of the frame, but only on one side. They did not do it on the lock side. A little bit of uh, tooling marks left there in the cutout, the relief, uh, sorry, the lock bar relief cutout. Little bit of tooling marks left in there, but it, they, that's really, really hidden. You've got to look for that, and I'm zoomed in. So uh, if you're not, you're really never going to see them. So just to be clear, pocket clip is, like I said, it is functional. It works well. It's a nice ramp, goes into the pocket well. It has good retention, and it comes out of the pocket well. You don't have to struggle. It's just not as attractive as the rest of the design. Backspacer is a uh, one-third backspacer, nice and clean. Nothing particularly crazy there. Oh, how funny is that that I've never noticed this? That looks like, if I'm not mistaken, wow, that's a that detent doesn't want to let me do that. It looks like, yeah, you can run a lanyard through there. Run it in, then run it back out and tie it off. So if you are a lanyard dude or dudette, that is a pretty ingenious way of doing it. I've, I don't think I've ever seen anybody do that. Nice little touch. And it's hidden away. So if you despise lanyards and you don't want a big old channel cut here or a big old hole in your frame, you don't. It's uninterrupted. It's beautiful and uninterrupted. But for those that do want a lanyard, you are able to use it. Perfectly centered as it should be. Let's take a look at the lockup. Get that focused, get zoomed in, and nice lock up on there. Pretty early, but not precariously early, thank God. Been seeing a lot of that lately, too. Let's see how that detent is. 
Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo. Sucks it right on in like your high school girlfriend. Giggity. There it is, baby. That is the Berserker. This, I'm going to tell you right now, flat out, I really, really, really love my Alpha Beasts. I, I don't want anybody to think that I don't. I do. It's just not the not kind of knife you can carry hardly at all. That might be my favorite PMP knives that I've handled. Alpha Smile Down is cool. And I like the design. I like the minimalistic frag, which I didn't think I'd ever pour that out of my mouth. Minimalistic frag. I like the whole concept. But overall, it didn't bowl me over like this did. And now this... This I've dropped in the pocket already a few times. Now that I'm going to be done with the photography and video on this and I can get it scratched up and and get, you know, user marks on it, I'm going to be carrying the shit out of it because this is really sleek and this is really pocket friendly for its large size and not too heavy weight, but still, you know, 7.5 ounces ain't nothing to laugh at. It is surprisingly pocket friendly. And I can't think of anything that I couldn't cut with that blade. Super sharp, very nicely done. Overall, I think uh, value-wise at the 270 to 300 bucks, this is an absolute no-brainer whatsoever. If you find one on the secondary market, snatch it up, because I think these are all sold out by now. Snatch one up. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to start looking on the secondary market because I think I want to get the uh, the bronze with the tiger stripe anodizing. Um, if not, I'll buy another plain Jane and I'm, I'm, I'll probably customize the hell out of that. This is going to be one of the few oversized. Notice I'm not saying overbuilt. This is overbuilt. It was one of the very few oversized knives that I think I actually really want to carry. If you're like a Medford uh, fanatic, but you're kind of getting tired of the same old styles, but you want that same feeling that you felt, you know, seven, eight years ago when you got your first Medford Praetorian T or Praetorian tie or Fat Daddy or something, you're like, man, I, I, I want that excitement of this big, ridiculous, oversized knife again. Um, you're going to love the living hell out of this. Get it absolutely get it. If you're a fan of that size of knife, this is going to impress the hell out of you. And an action that Medford has no interest in working with. That's fine. It's a different type of knife. I'm not knocking Greg in any way, shape, or form. This is meant to be a very smooth, very fast flipper. And it feels so wonderful to close, to deploy, when you feel the jipping on the back of that flipper tab, and that thing just rockets, and I do mean rockets, out of there. Really, really nicely done. So, yeah, this is, I'm going to say it definitely for sure, that is my favorite PMP knives uh, as of right now for all around. This is still going to be my favorite for just being absurd and being show offy and going, man, look at that. There's the, the 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 cost of the Moku tie alone is the cost of some people's entire knives. And that dam of steel, that's just, I mean, my God, nearly a half an inch thick. Come on. However, it's made for a reason. It's made to be that show off piece. It's not made to be practical in any way. So when they followed it up with the Alpha Smilodon, that made a lot more people uh, happy because, well, now there's a knife that you can actually carry. But this one, this is both. This is a great show-off piece, and it's something that I can carry and use and fidget with and have fun with and everything all at once. So there you have it, boys and girls. Thank you for joining me as always. Uh, don't forget, right down there, you've got a little button with a, a little heart and a, there's like a dollar sign or something in it. It's the super like button. You can click that and donate money to the channel. And help me build the uh, the content for the channel. Bring in more knives. Bring in more cool stuff. And that's exactly what I plan to do. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I've been doing a lot more uploads since uh, the since really since December. But uh, since the new year, I'm trying to pound out a lot of videos, and I've got a lot of exciting stuff planned. But at some point, I'm going to run dry on knives to use. So. 
if you feel like uh, adding some uh, some of your own your benefits to the channel, I would love it if you could. Otherwise, thank you guys for always being here. I absolutely love doing this. It's been 11 years now. Oh my goodness gracious. And I think this is going to be the best year yet. See you guys on the next video.